Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to build a budget tracker or a budget planner using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Okay, so this right here is the final product. As we can see, we've got a table full of either expenses or income. Now, all of these amounts here are going to add up to a total in the bottom right corner and you can do things like change a row to be an income instead and the total is going to update accordingly. You can also do things like add a new entry, you can edit existing entries, you can delete entries and so on and all the data is going to be saved in local storage which means it's going to persist. So when you refresh the page a second, third or fourth time you know, and so on, um, the data is going to uh, stay there. So this is all easily done using pure JavaScript. Now, before jumping into the code, today's video is sponsored by Fusion Charts. Fusion Charts is a feature packed library full of responsive and interactive charts, graphs and gauges, making it a perfect fit for your next dashboard or data visualization project. Let me show you how easy it is to create a bar chart using Fusion Charts. To install, you can use NPM or you can paste in the HTML using Fusion Charts CDN. To render a chart using Fusion Charts, we can create a new chart container in the HTML. We can now head inside the JavaScript below and create a new instance of Fusion Charts passing through all of the properties and options, including the charts type. We can then pass through the data itself and then lastly call the render method and we're good to go. And as we can see, it was that easy to create a bar chart using Fusion charts. You can also change your theme. I can paste in the fusion theme right there and then provide the theme as being fusion. Then if I go back in the browser, we're going to get this beautiful theme right here. It also integrates nicely with your favorite JavaScript framework such as React, Angular or Vue. So go to fusioncharts.com or click on the link in the description below to begin your free trial today. Okay, so to begin coding this from scratch, I just want to start off by saying uh, the source code is going to be linked down below if you would like to download and follow along while you watch today's video. Okay, so to begin our coding of this uh, budget planner, we can head inside the text editor. Now, I'm beginning here with an index.html file. So firstly, I want to link up both a CSS and JavaScript file. So going inside the directory structure here, let's make a new folder called CSS and a second one uh, called JS. So now inside both of these uh, folders, we can make a new uh, main.js file and of course a new main.css file. So now we can simply uh, link these two files up inside the index.html by going inside the head and creating a new link to a CSS file, of course, going to CSS, then main.css and a new script source here, going to uh, JS, then of course, main.js. Now, you also wanna make sure that you include a, uh, a type of module here, and this will ensure that you're then able to use the import export syntax in JavaScript, as well as the fact that this script is gonna be deferred by default, which means it's only going to run once your document is ready. That's gonna solve you, so that's that's gonna save you um, any headaches uh, that you might have regarding you know things like undefined element and things like that, okay? So we've got the CSS and the JavaScript file linked up. We can now begin on the actual HTML before moving on to the CSS and then lastly, the JavaScript. Okay, so hopping inside the body here, let's make a new div with an ID of app and then drop inside here. Now, this is gonna be the main container for the uh, application or for the table essentially. So we can now create a new table here with a class of budget-tracker. Okay, so now this will be uh, the main table for the budget tracker. So we can create a new table header just like this and then we can pop in and create a single table row and a bunch of table header elements for each one of our columns. So for example, we can say date, then we can say description, then we can use type, okay, and amount. And then lastly here, just keeping, uh, keeping a fifth row available um, just for the uh, for the delete entry button. 
Okay, so we have our table head right there. We can now proceed to creating a new table body here with a class of entries. Okay, so basically this table body uh, is going to contain each individual entry inside the budget tracker. So as an example, we're going to create um, a single entry so we can of course style it up using CSS. Okay, so inside here, we can create a new table row and a new table data cell with a new input field here. And the type of this input field is going to be date because this one here, of course, is going to be the date picker. Okay, so we're going to also need to give this a class of input and a second class of input dash dates. The reason for this second class here is so we can then access this input field from within the JavaScript code. Okay, so moving on now, we can create a second TD looking very similar to this one, except this one here is gonna be a input description with a type of text. Now, optionally, you can have a placeholder here and you can say something like, uh, um, I put for my example at the beginning of this video, uh, I put in something like this where I say add a description, wages, bills, etc. So um, you can place that if you would like to. And we can drop down, make a second or sorry, a third uh, TD. But this one here is going to be the type of income. So ex sorry, the type of uh, row. So either income or expense. So for this one, it's going to be a select drop down. So we can get rid of this input field here and create a new select um, with a class of input and then a second class of input dash type. Now, in terms of the options inside here, we're going to have either, of course, income or expense. So let's give this first one a value of income and the text of income. And of course, the second one, a value of expense and a text of expense just like that. Okay, so moving on, we can create a fourth table data cell. And this one here is going to be an input field. Um, it's going to be a type of number, this of course being the amount. Okay, so either negative or positive amount, depending on the income or expense. So we can say a class of input, and then input dash amount, just like that. Now, lastly here, we're going to create a fifth TD. This one here is going to be for the delete entry button, the little x. So we can make a new button here. The type of this button is going to be button. And the class will be simply delete dash entry. And we're going to be using an HTML entity here to give us a multiplication or a cross symbol. So we'll just say and and then hash one zero 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 five semicolon. I can now save this and go inside the browser and we can check our progress. So we're going to get something like this. As we can see, we have the main structure going for the table header and a single uh, entry inside the budget tracker. OK, so moving on, we can create a second uh, table body here. Now, this table body is going to simply be a section for us to include the add new entry button. OK, so let's make a new TR inside here and a singular TD with a column span of five because we want the add entry button to be in the right corner of that row. So we can include that col span there. Then of course inside here, create that button with a type of button and the class is gonna simply be uh, new dash entry. Then we can say for the text, of course, something like new entry, very straightforward. I can save this and go back in the browser. And as we can see, it's currently in the left corner, but we're going to use CSS to place it in the right corner. Okay, moving on now to the final part of this table, it's going to be the table footer. So the table footer is going to contain uh, essentially just that area to give you the total amounts for your entire budget tracker. So we can make a new TR and a TD with a cold span of five, just like the, uh, the new entry button. Now you're going to also want to include here on both of these uh, TDs. So back up into this new entry, include a class of controls on the first one. On the second one, we can include a class of summary, just like that. Now going inside the TD here, let's make a new strong here. 
uh, which says simply total and then a new span with a class of total currently being zero dollars by default. So now if I save this and go back in the browser, we're gonna get something like this. So now we are done with the HTML. I do wanna mention that essentially all of the stuff, so basically this entire table, okay, um, not including the div, okay, this entire table is gonna be generated dynamically using JavaScript. So we've only got it here now, so we can actually style it using CSS and see our progress, but eventually the JavaScript code is going to be, you know, generating this HTML, okay? So moving on to the CSS file, we're gonna begin by targeting the class of budget-tracker. So for that entire uh, table, okay? so. We're gonna give this a border collapse of none. Sorry, not none. It's gonna be a border collapse of collapse. Now this here is going to ensure that if you wanna include any sort of you know, borders on your, uh, on your budget tracker, they're going to be overlapping each other, giving you a nice clean look. We can also give this a minimum width of 750 px. This is of course optional and changeable by you. And we can include now a budget tracker, then targeting every element inside there and applying a font family. So we can just say font family equal to sans serif. Of course, pick your favorite font for this value here. We can move on by targeting every single table header uh, cell inside the budget tracker. So for this, we'll just give this a text align of left to remove that default centering a padding of 10px top and bottom and 20px left and right as well as a border bottom here of two pixels then solid then 009578. I can save this and go back in the browser and we're gonna get something like this. So not looking, not looking too bad so far but of course we can improve on it. So going back inside the CSS, we can now target the budget tracker and basically every single uh, table data cell inside there. Give this a padding of five pixels on all sides, okay? We can now move on to targeting both every single input field and uh, the delete entry button. So for, for these input fields and this button, they're gonna share some similar properties. The first one being a height of 30 pixels, so it's consistent across the board, as well as a font size here of 13 pixels, some padding of zero top and bottom, and then 10 px left and right, a margin of zero, and then finally a box sizing of border box um, to ensure that our increased padding does not blow out um, you know, the whole dimensions of the input fields and of course the button. So I can save this and go back in the browser. Now we can see all of these input fields have a consistent height. Okay, so moving on, we can now target the input fields specifically. So for these ones, gonna be giving this a border of one pixel solid and then a very light gray, as well as a border radius of five pixels for a very subtle um, border. We can also give this an outline of none and then drop down and just say, when you focus or when you're editing an input field, we're gonna increase the border color to be a slightly darker gray being uh, triple B right there. I can now save this and go back in the browser and we get something like this. So um, of course, um, we're almost done with the CSS. So we can now move on to styling up the delete entry uh, button on the right side. Um, so we can target the class of delete entry. And for this one, we can firstly display this as a flex and give it an align items of center as well as a justify content of center. These three properties are going to ensure that your multiplication symbol or your X is gonna be centered vertically and horizontally, okay? We can also give this a width of 30 pixels to match the height of the input fields and of course the button as well as a background of none, a color or text color of red. We're gonna be giving this no border, but we're gonna apply a border radius here of 50%, okay? An outline of none and a cursor of pointer. So if I save this and go back in the browser, as we can see, we get something like this. Now, 
um, the border radius is currently not being used or it's not actually visible because there is no background or border for it to actually, you know, display. So we're going to say when you hover over the delete entry button, so colon hover, we're going to simply apply a background here of a very light red being RGBA 25500 and then 0 0.1 for a 10% opaque red. Okay, we can now just go back in the browser and hover over the X button and we get that border radius giving us a full circle. Okay, moving on to the last CSS rule set is going to be for both the controls class and the summary. So remember, that's just the new entry button and the total amount uh, text. For these, a text align of right to push them to the right side of the table. So saving this and going back in the browser and we're going to get something like that. Perfect. So now we are fully complete with both the HTML and the CSS. We can move on to the JavaScript. Okay, so moving on to the JavaScript code, we can head back into VS Code and we can of course go inside the main.js file. So the first thing to do is going to be to create a new file inside the JS directory called budgettracker.js. So basically, this is going to be a class which is going to handle everything related to the budget tracker, which means this main JS file needs to import this file here and of course its class. Okay, so we can say export default class and call this budget tracker. Okay, now because we use export default, we are then able to import this class into the main.js. Also, if you guys aren't too sure about how JavaScript classes work, I've got a whole video dedicated to that if you want to watch uh, that one first before jumping back into this one. So in terms of importing this file, we can just say import budget tracker from budget tracker.js. So watch out for this .js. It might not automatically do it for you. If it does, great. If not, include .js at the end here. So we can now simply drop down here and we can create a new instance of this class. So we'll say new budget tracker and then pass through here a query selector string. We're going to pass through here an ID of app. This is just telling the JavaScript code or the code we're going to write. Okay. It's going to tell it to use this div or our div from earlier um, as the main container for our budget tracker. And like I said earlier, the JavaScript is going to be the one which injects HTML. Eventually, the HTML file is going to look like this, nothing inside of app. Okay, so going back inside the main.js file, that is all done. We can now move on to the budget tracker.js. So we're going to begin by defining each method inside this uh, class before implementing each one um, one by one. Okay, so Dropping down here, we can define the constructor to take in the query selector string, just like that. We can now define the first method here. It's going to be a static method and it's going to be called HTML. This is going to return the HTML for the actual table itself. Okay. We can make a new static method here or a second static method called uh, entry HTML. This right here is going to return the HTML string for a single row inside that table. Okay. The next one here is going to be a method called load. This will be the initial loading of the data. Okay. And our next one called update summary. This one here is going to take all of the current rows in the table and work out the total amount and display it in the bottom right corner. Okay. Moving on to the next one, it's going to be called save. And as the name suggests, it's going to take all the data and save it to local storage so it can be persisted when you refresh the page. Okay, we can make a new uh, method here called add entry. It's going to take in a entry as an object. So more on this later on, but it's going to have a default value of an empty object just like that. And basically this method add entry is going to add a new entry inside the table. Okay. 
Next up, we can say get entry rows. And this method is gonna basically be a little helper for us to return all of the active rows or all of the rows inside uh, the table or the entries, right? Cool, moving on, we can define a new method called on new entry btn click. So when you click on the button for a new entry, this function is gonna run. Of course, it's going to then, you know, add a new entry and so on. Um, the last method here is gonna be called on delete, uh, delete entry, uh, btn click. This one here is gonna be taking through the event object and basically it's going to do something when the user clicks on the little x to delete an entry. Cool, so now we can go up to the top here and we can begin implementing the constructor. Okay, so the first step for the constructor is gonna be to get a reference to the root HTML element, of course, our app um, div. So we'll say here, this dot root is gonna be equal to document dot query selector, passing through here the query selector string, okay? Now I can just say something like, you know, console.log this dot root to confirm it actually works. So I'm gonna save this here and go back in the browser. As we can see uh, in the console, if I open it up, we have the div with an ID of app right here. So it is successfully being passed through and selected by our constructor. Okay, so now moving on, we can simply just say this dot root dot inner HTML is gonna be equal to uh, budget tracker dot HTML. So we're gonna take the HTML string from this method here and simply inject it inside our app. Okay, so we can get to that very shortly, but for now, I just wanna finish off this constructor. So it's also gonna be doing uh, this dot root dot query selector. We're gonna grab onto the new entry button and we'll just say when the user clicks on the new entry button. We're gonna run this function and basically, we're gonna make a simple call to this uh, dot on new entry btn click. So of course, handling, um, you know, when the user clicks on the new entry button. Now, of course, um, once the HTML has been injected by this method here, this new entry class is gonna be accessible, okay? Now we can drop down and just say this dot load to initially, I'm gonna say here, load initial data from local storage, something like that. So of course, um, that's our first initial load. Okay, so now we can move on to implementing this static HTML method. It's gonna be really straightforward. And we're gonna say return. Now using the back ticks on the keyboard next to your one, your one key, we can now access JavaScript template strings, which give us, which then gives us access to uh, multi-line strings. All right, so inside here, in this return, we can simply copy all of the table HTML from in the HTML file. So copy this and paste it inside here. Now, make sure that you also remove our single uh, entry, because of course that is gonna be loaded dynamically. So remove that single entry inside the entries T body and keep it empty just like that. So now of course we have our base structure um, being injected by the JavaScript, which means um, if I save this and go back in the browser, as we can see, the entry is gone because the entire HTML has been replaced by our JavaScript call right up here. Okay, so that is all for our static HTML method. We can now move on to implementing right down here, the entry HTML. So for this one, we'll just say return, once again, the multi-line string, the back ticks, okay? And now of course, just passing through here or copy and pasting our singular row from the HTML. So copy that and paste it inside here, very straightforward fix the formatting and the indentation, and we are good to go. Okay, so now we have that method implemented. We can now safely remove all of the HTML from our HTML file, or at least everything inside the app, uh, the app div, and clean that up so it looks something like this, and there we go. 
Okay, so now moving on inside the uh, JavaScript class here, we can minimize both our static methods and work on the load method. So before starting work on the load method, I wanna show you uh, what the local storage data looks like. So going back into our other uh, you know, tab here, I can inspect uh, or open the developer tools here and go inside the application tab. So I wanna just remove here this second key I was experimenting before this video. So this key right here, budget tracker entries inside local storage, okay, has a JSON string full of all the data. So going down here, we can see every single entry is an object in JavaScript with amount, date, description, type, and so on. Well, that's it really. <laughs> um, but there we go. So it's an array of all of your objects. Okay, so now we need to simply you know, when we first load up, you know, inside here, on initial load, we need to, of course, read that data and display it inside, of course, our table. So, going inside here, we'll just simply say uh, something like const entries is equal to, then call json.parse. We're going to parse the JSON, which comes out of the local storage call. So we'll then say local storage.getsItem, then passing through here our key. Now, because I'm using the exact same, you know, URL and port, um, this data here is actually available on this tab here. So for you guys, if you want to use the budget tracker entries key, you can, but in my case, to keep our data fresh and new, I'm going to change my key to be something like budget tracker uh, entries. Let's just do dash dev. Okay. So like I said, you guys can make your, you know, your key just like that. I'm going to include dash dev to, of course, you know, begin with a fresh set of data. Okay. Now, on the first load of your whole application, there's gonna be nothing returned from this get item, you know, call. So instead, we'll say or and default to an empty array. So using double quotes here, we can create a JSON empty array, which can also be parsed, like I said, in the case where it's the user's first time loading up the web page. Okay, now dropping down, we can then just say, you know, for for of, for every single entry inside your entries array, okay, we can say this dot add entry and we can add the entry to our table, okay? Now, we can also say this dot update summary, which of course is going to update the total in the bottom right corner on the initial load. So now, if I just uh, console.log the entries here, Okay, just like this, I can save it and go back in the browser and we can see we get an empty array. If I make the key here to be instead, you know, without the dash div, it's gonna use the data from earlier. As we can see, we get the five objects right here. And of course, like I showed you before, just looping through those objects and of course, adding it to our table. So going back to the dash dev for an empty array, of course, now this add entry isn't gonna do anything, okay? Because of course, there's no elements in the array. Anyway, moving on, <laughs> um, we can go ahead and implement um, the add entry method. So for this add entry method, it's gonna be relatively straightforward. We need to firstly just say this.roots.query selector. We're gonna be selecting the entries table body the container for our entries. We're then just gonna say, insert adjacent HTML, okay? Before the end of our table body, we can inject this HTML. It's gonna be budget tracker dot entry HTML, just like that. So now, of course, if I save this and then I might actually drop down to the on new entry button click, okay? I'll say inside here, this dot add entry. So now of course the button's gonna work so we can see this in action. Go back in the browser, click on the uh, new entry button 
and we get this right here. We've inserted the entry HTML to our entries table body. So now it's going to be a simple case of, you know, taking, uh, taking this entry, which of course this entry here, going to have your date description, you know, type and so on. Going to take this data and then add it or inject it into our HTML, our table row. So we can say uh, const row is going to be this.root.query selector. We're going to select the last row inside the entries table body. So we'll just say entries, then select TR, then say colon last of type. Now, of course, the last of type is going to be the row which we literally just inserted. So basically, this row is a JavaScript reference to this HTML. Okay, we can drop down and just say row.query selector. We can now pass in here the input dash date class to gain access to our date picker input field. We can now say dot value equal to entry dot date. Okay, or if there is no date, if it's a new entry, okay, we're going to default the date to be the current date. So we'll just say here new date dot to ISO string. Then we'll just say dot replace here and we'll say using regular expressions here, we'll say T dot and then anything replacing with a empty string. So this right here, I want to explain this part. So if I just call new date dot to ISO string in the browser, we can see it's going to give us this right here. It'll give us the current, you know, date time in an ISO format. Okay. So this first part here, year dash month dash day, this is what we want to be injected into our date picker input field. We don't care about T and so on. So basically this regex is going to replace T and everything above it or everything in front of it with an empty string, giving us only that date part. Okay, cool. Next one here is going to be the input dash description. Uh, going to be set to, of course, entry, then description, otherwise default to an empty string, very straightforward. And right down here for the input and then type, of course, being that drop down, we're going to say the value is going to be entry type or, and we can just simply default the new entries to be an income. Okay. We can move on to the input uh, amounts input field. And for this one, we'll say entry dot amount or defaulting to zero for new entries. Okay. Then lastly, we can hook onto the, um, the delete button. So we'll say row dot query selector, the delete entry button. And for this one, we'll just say dot add event listener. When the user clicks on the, uh, on the delete entry little X button, we're going to grab onto the event object right here uh, with E. Okay. Then just say this dot on delete entry BTN click and then pass through that event object E being right there. So now if I drop down to the delete entry BTN click, I can just say something like console.log entry deleted just for now. Of course, later on, we're going to be, you know, actually implementing this method, but for now, was a console.log. Okay. And we can stop here and just go in the browser and check our progress. So if we go in the browser and press the new entry button, we're going to get this right here. As we can see, it defaults to today's date, the type of income and a zero amount. If I press on the X button, it's going to say entry deleted in the console. Okay. So the very last step for the add entry, um, you know, method here is going to simply just be row dot query selector all. We're going to select every single input field inside the row. And we'll say for each one of those, we can grab onto the input field and we'll just say right down here, input dot add event listener and listen for the change event. So basically whenever your input field changes a value, Okay, we're going to simply say uh, this dot save. We're going to call the save method to, of course, commit this change to 
the local storage, okay? So we're getting there, okay? We can now move on to just implementing the save method. Okay, so for the save method, we're going to uh, firstly here, um, just essentially take all of our rows and then convert it into an array of objects to be saved. So the first step for this is gonna be to actually go down and implement this get entry rows. So inside this one, we'll just say return array dot from here. Then we'll just say uh, this dot root dot query selector all. Then we can just say the class of entries and of course the tr. So by default, this query selector all is going to give you an array like object of nodes called a node list. Okay, but we actually want to use an array. So basically, this is going to take our node list in and convert it into an array. So I can show you this right now. If I just do console.log, then call the this dot uh, get entry rows method here. Go back in the browser. If I add a new entry, then make a change, of course, triggering a save. In the browser, we get the single table row here inside an array. Okay, now the importance of the array here is because the save method, we're going to want to use the array map method. Okay, so we can say const data is equal to then call this dot get entry rows. So we got the array. We can now say dot map. So dot map is going to allow you to take each one of your entry rows and then convert it to something else. So inside here, we can grab a hold of the or each row just like this. And this function here is going to return a new object for every single table row. This object is going to be essentially what gets saved in local storage. Basically, these things right here, like I showed you earlier. So going back inside here, we'll say return date is going to be equal to here row.query selector and grab onto the input dash date and then simply get the value out of that. Do the exact same thing now for the description. Okay. Then, of course, the type just like this, exact same thing. And then lastly, um, the amount. Now for the amount, I want to be able to use here um, parse floats to simply take our, um, our value and then convert it to a float number. So we have those decimals supported. Okay, so now if I console.log, uh, you know, the value of data here, Go back in the browser, add a new entry, make a change, and we get here the data. The first element is an object, amount of zero, date of the current date, no description, and so on. If I say description like groceries, make that change, trigger a save. Inside here, we now have description as being groceries. So now the save method needs to take this data and simply commit it to local storage. So we'll say here, local storage dot set item using the same key as we did earlier for the load uh, method budget tracker entries dev just like this and we'll say for the value here json dot stringify to convert our array of data into a json string just like that and now upon uh, saving the data we'll just say this dot update summary again to of course make our total reflect what it actually should be. So now we can just, you know, stop here and we can go back in the browser. We can add a new entry, something like groceries. We can say that was an expense of like $50 and it's now saved to local storage. If I inspect the application tab here in the developer tools in local storage, we have the new key now for dash dev. And this shows here our data, which means now if I refresh the page, we have the data still maintained, of course, being loaded in by the load method right up here. Cool. So now we can move on to the final stages of today's video um, being the on entry or on delete entry BTN click. So for this one, 
we're passing through here a console, sorry, we're passing through here the event object being E. So um, let's see what this looks like. If I go back in the browser, at a new entry here, and I do something like, uh, let's just do wages. It's an income of like $1,000, your, your monthly pay or whatever it might be. Now, refresh, it's still there, perfect. So now, if I go in the console again, and I just uh, delete the groceries, we can see in the console, we get this pointer event. So this event object contains a property called target, which refers to the button which we clicked on. So basically, we can begin from this button right here and go all the way up to find the table row. So in the JavaScript, we can just say e.target, okay, dot closest tr. This right here will give us its parent table row. We can now just say dot remove to remove that row. Save this back in the browser. Um, we can now just delete this row and it's gone, but it was not saved. So refresh and it's still there. Going back inside here, we can call this dot save to of course commit that change. Back in the browser, press X again, it's saved, refresh and it's gone forever. So there we go. The last step now is going to be to implement this update summary method. So for this one here, we are going to simply say const total is going to be equal to then once again calling this dot get entry rows. We have access to now the array, um, the array reduce method. So the reduce method it essentially allows you to take an array and then convert it or reduce it down. So reduce it down um, to a single value. So in our case, we want to take every single row and convert it to a single total. So here, we're going to take through here a callback function with the current total and the, and, uh, the row. So whatever row you're currently on as you loop through each one. Okay, we can now say this function is going to do something. Okay, we'll leave it blank for now. But the second argument here to so the reduce method is going to be the starting total, of course, being zero. We're going to we're going to count from zero, basically. Now, also, guys, I've got a whole video dedicated to the reduce method. So if it's not making sense, I hope you guys can watch that video. Um, and I hope it makes sense uh, coming back to this one. But anyway, moving on. This reduce method is going to do a couple of things. The first thing is it's going to be uh, grabbing the amount out of the input field. So we'll say const amount equal to row dot query selector, then select the class of input dash amount. Then just simply say dot value to get that value. We can now say const is expense equal to, then of course, once again, getting uh, getting the value out of the input dash uh, type field this time. And we're just going to say, look, if the select dropdown is on the expense uh, value, then of course, yes, equals, 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 it is an expense. Okay. And lastly, here we can say const modifier is going to be equal to either plus one or negative one. So this here is going to be applied to our math to either make this item, you know, take away a certain amount or add on a certain amount. So for this, we'll just say, if it's an expense, then we can say negative one, otherwise make it a positive one. So now, of course, we can drop down here and just say return total plus, then add this new amount. So we'll say amount times the modifier. Of course, now it's going to basically say, look, you've got your running total here, add on the new amount. And if it's an expense, make it negative one or negative amount. If it's not, make it a positive amount. Of course, a plus and a plus is going to give you a plus. A plus and a minus will give you a subtraction. So that is how that works. So right here we have the total. If I console.log the total here, go back in the browser, we can see you know, when the page first loads up, we have the total currently at 1000, of course, just reflecting this amount right here. If I make a new entry and say an expense of, you know, $40, refresh or 
you know, we can see right here, it now says 960 upon saving it. So that's working perfectly fine for the income and the expense. So now how do we get this inside the span and make it formatted or nicely with a dollar sign and decimal places? Very straightforward actually, well, kind of, but if we go back inside here, we can now just say const total formatted. Okay, so basically it just means, look, format it with a nice dollar sign and your decimal places. To do this, we can just say uh, new, um, new intl dot number format. Okay, we can now pass in here en us to format with the us locale. Okay, we can now say the style is going to be currency. Okay, and the currency is going to be in USD. So this right here is going to allow you to apply that nice formatting to your total. We can now say dot format, then pass through here the total amount. We can now just simply say this dot root dot query selector, taking in here the class of input dash uh, total, or my mistake guys, just total. This of course referring to that span, which we covered earlier on, this one right down here. And we can just say dot text content equal to the total being formatted, okay? I can save this and then go back in the browser and we get the 1000 or the, the 960 being displayed right there. If I make this an income instead, we get 1040. So that is all done for the budget tracker. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video or you learned something. If you did, drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.